Today we'll be taking a look at the main battle line of the Adeptus Auroratus. Hello and welcome back to Auspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. We've recently been going through the Sisters of Battle Codex, unit by unit and datasheet by datasheet, and today it's time for the core of the Codex itself, the Battle Sister Squad. In this video we'll be taking a look at their datasheet, any obvious buffs, combos or synergies on the tabletop, and how I would personally run them at the moment in games of 40k. In the background, the Battle Sisters are the fighting arm of the Ecclesiarchy. Schooled for years in everything from unarmed combat to marksmanship with the Holy Bolter, they are a cut above the standard rank and file of the Imperium. Their considerable training is augmented by fine arms and armour, one of the few normal human ranks to be afforded power armour. Under the leadership of their sister superiors, their aim is to repulse the foe in open conflict on the field of battle. So let's see how they perform in the rules. So battle sister squads are a troops choice for Codex Adeptus Auroratus. They are 9 points a model at base, so 45 points for the standard 5 woman squad, and you can have up to 10 battle sisters per squad. They have a movement of 6, weapon skill of 4+, plus, ballistic skill of 3 up, Strength and Toughness 3, 1 Wound, 1 Attack, Leadership 7 and a 3 plus save. And the Sister Superior has the standard Sergeant upgrade of 1 extra attack and 1 extra pip of leadership. Meaning that the squad will typically be Leadership 8. Every model is armed with a Bolt Gun, Bolt Pistol and Frag and Crack Grenades. So at base they are a fairly well survivable squad. who will be quite happy putting out a decent amount of Strength for Firepower, either at 24 inches or in Rapid Fire. Being such a cheap squad at base is really good for filling out battalions, and compared with some of their more elite Imperial counterparts such as Space Marines, this means that these Sisters of Battle are very good for getting a lot of command points into a force for a relatively low points cost. The squad has quite a few options. Up to two regular Battle Sisters can take a weapon from the Special Weapons list, so that's the Storm Bolter, Flamer or Melter Gun. Out of these three, my default pick will be the Storm Bolter, as essentially the Storm Bolter will just double the firepower for that Battle Sister for just 2 points, which is a really good deal if you're not thinking about buying another special weapon. Personally I'm not quite the biggest fan of Flamers, just because in the Battle Sister's army you can come by a lot of strength 4 hits very easily, and the range is a bit limiting. I would honestly usually rather have a Storm Bolter than a Flamer, just because of that range flexibility, and also the Storm Bolter is only 2 points when the Flamer is 6 points though there are some reasons that you take flamers, such as specific orders or stratagems. A melter gun would set you back 14 points, so to be honest is really quite an expensive option. I honestly don't think that melter guns are priced very well at the moment, across most of 40k, and to my mind they aren't really the most efficient source of anti-tank. You do need anti-tank somewhere in a sisters list though, and depending on how you're delivering the battle sisters to the front line, they could be one potential option, but frankly my first choice would probably be to put the melter guns elsewhere in the list say places like Dominions or Seraphim with Inferno Pistols, both of whom are just generally going to be a lot more reliable getting those expensive guns to their target. Instead of one of these special weapons, one of the sisters could also take a heavy weapon, which for Battle Sisters is either a Heavy Flamer, Heavy Bolter or Multi Melter. Now if you do pick up any of these, then you're going to want to actually make good use of it, as are all quite expensive options. The Heavy Flamer is 14 points, the Multi Melter is 22, and the Heavy Bolter is the cheapest at 10. Out of these three, my first pick would probably be the Heavy Bolter, to dish out a little bit more infantry fire, particularly if your Battle Sister squad is thinking about just sitting back and scoring a backfield objective. At least with a longer range weapon, they'll be able to contribute to the game. The Multi Melter is a bit of a problematic weapon on Battle Sister squads, as it's just very short ranged. They're generally quite slow moving units, and when they do move, it'll only hit on a 4+, plus, and it's also very expensive. To my mind, you're probably better off with heavy flamers and multi-melters on retributor squads, because then you can move and shoot the multi-melters, and also have the benefit of armorium cherubs, and your heavy flamers will be longer range as well, meaning that they're far easier to deliver the firepower where you need. The Sister Superior also has war gear options, she can swap her bolt gun for a weapon off either the ranged weapons or melee weapons list, and swap her bolt pistol for one of the pistol weapons. For my taste, the combi weapons are a little bit expensive, but if you are really trying to up all the firepower that you can in one Battle Sister squad, you could certainly do worse than a combi melter or combi plasma. I personally wouldn't usually bother with the melee power weapons, 
the power mace and power sword aren't really all that impressive on a strength 3 model, unless you're going with some sort of order that's great at combat, such as Bloody Rose, in which case it will be a little bit more tempting. For the pistols list, again you could potentially add a little bit more close range firepower to the squad by taking a plasma pistol, or an inferno pistol, though both of these are relatively expensive and very short ranged. I do quite like the hand flamer for the sister superior as it's just a one point upgrade that if it does ever get in range will actually do a reasonable amount of strength 3 hits. It's certainly not going to change the world in any big way though, so I think it's very much a take or leave type thing. Finally the Condemn the Bolt Gun, while very cheap, it's just a bit rubbish really. Even against its intended target of Psychers, it's only as good as two bolters, which isn't exactly very impressive, so I probably wouldn't bother with that unless it's just for looks purposes, because I admit that that gun looks really cool. As an aside, the Condemner Bolt Gun is a 1 point upgrade that functions the same as a regular bolter but just has D3 damage when you target Psychers. In addition to their war gear, the squad can take a Simulacrum Imperialis, the special sigil that allows them to perform an act of faith this turn, even if another unit has already used an act of faith. It costs 5 points, so you do really have to weigh it up against the advantage of taking more sisters. If you're going for small squads without upgrades, I certainly wouldn't bother with this. Perhaps if you are thinking about packing some heavy war gear, particularly melter guns, it could find a little bit more use. In a similar vein, the Incensor Cherub is a 5 point once per battle ability, where you use it at the start of a phase, you roll 2 dice and pick the highest to be used as a miracle dice, and then it can only be used by this squad this phase as an act of faith. So in theory you get one auto act of faith that can only be used by that squad, and hopefully the result should be quite high. Could be particularly good if you are blazing away with a melter gun or rolling a number of shots for a heavy flamer or something. I think that taking both of these does have a bit of a synergistic effect because then you could have the extra act of faith from the incensor cherub as no you can use it with the simulacrum. I'd be most tempted to use both of these if I was using it in a 10 woman sister squad but again I would really question how worth it they are compared with just having more sisters in the first place. As well as those fancy war gear options the Battle Sisters have the standard special rules, Acts of Faith to allow them to gain and use Miracle Dice, and Shield of Faith for the 6-up Invul save, and Ability to Deny on 1d6. So overall the Battle Sister squad is a flexible and really quite cheap troops unit, with decent survivability and reasonable anti-light infantry damage output, and you have the option to customise them for certain other battlefield roles. So let's take a look at all the various ways that we can get more out of them. Firstly and most obviously is the choice of order, and unsurprisingly as the core troops unit, Battle Sisters get something out of all of the orders, and your order conviction might well determine how you want to set up the squad in the first place. Firstly, our Master Lady is really quite a good one for Battle Sister squads. Our Master Lady will add plus one to hit rolls if the squad has taken a casualty. This is really good in multi-model troops units like the Battle Sisters, and it could make it a bit more worth it to take something like a Melter Gun or Multi Melter. Just as the squad starts to take casualties, you should be hitting on twos unless they are wiped out. The other part of their trait is that you gain another Miracle Dice every time a squad is wiped, so I sort of feel these two benefits pull you in different directions. The first bit really incentivizes big squads, so the squad is partly damaged but still survives to get the plus one to hit. And the second part incentivizes small squads, because if more squads get wiped, then you get more miracle dice to play with. Either way, it's a decent buff to your standard battle line sisters, so you can't really go too far wrong. Next we have Valorous Heart, with their 6 up feel no pain type saves, and counting AP-1 weapons as AP-0. Between those two, they make the battle sister squads significantly more durable, particularly if there's also an Imagifier around, to ignore AP-2 rending as well. Those two buffs mean that Battle Sisters are really going to be very hard to shift in this order conviction, particularly if you park them in cover, so that basically nothing is going to be efficient in removing them that isn't AP3 or better, as literally anything AP-2 or worse will still be giving the Sisters a 2-up save while they're in cover. Point for point, these skills can be incredibly durable, and this will make for a very strong and resilient Battle Sister battle line. Next we have Bloody Rose, the close combat order. They get plus one attack on the charge, and all of their melee and pistol weapons are an extra AP minus one. They're still somewhat hampered by being strength three, but with an Imagifier around to make them strength four, then your standard sisters on the line will actually start to pose a very real close combat threat, and can allow you to be a bit more aggressive, and perhaps bully off other enemy light infantry, or even just cause a few more casualties to 
enemy units that wouldn't usually have to fear the strength 3 attacks of battle sisters. Ebon Chalice will also increase the durability of the sisters with a 5 plus shrug off against mortal wounds. They're also good for using miracle dice as they can guarantee more 6s so it might be better to include a few more damage d6 weapons such as melter guns about in your army with this one. Ardent Shroud can advance and then shoot their weapons as if they hadn't advanced, so this will give you an incredibly mobile battle sister line. I think that this one will be well paired with Storm Bolters or any of the other special weapons, where range can be a bit of an issue, and having extra mobility to get your sister squads into gun range will be a handy bonus. Being able to spread out and reach objectives in the midfield earlier should certainly lead to a few more points over the game. Finally, Sacred Rose offers a trinity of small benefits. Firstly, no more than one model can flee from a morale test, so it makes your big 10-woman sister squads a little bit more viable and less vulnerable to morale shenanigans. They have 5 or 6 overwatch, boosting your bolters and storm bolters if the foe tries to get to grips with them, and also more miracle dice by farming them on a 5-up. Overall, probably my favourite order convictions are Our Martyred Lady and Valorous Heart for the plus 1 to hit, an extra miracle dice, and the 6 top feel no pain, and potentially ignoring AP-2 weapons, respectively. All of the others do provide reasonable benefits though, it's only really Ebon Chalice that doesn't do a fat lot for the Battle Sister squads compared with the rest, though in certain matchups against mortal wound spamming armies, it wouldn't be too bad. Moving on to character support now, obviously if you are equipping them with any extra firepower, then getting cannonesses nearby is something that's pretty easy to do. They're cheap, give reroll ones to hit in both melee and ranged, and they're decent units to support virtually any unit in the Sisters Codex. Celestine can buff their invul save to give them a 5 up Shield of Faith special rule, making them significantly harder to shift. The Triumph of St. Catherine can make them immune to morale and better in close combat. If you're Order of Armastered Lady, then Junith Arita can give reroll ones to hit and wound, which is a bit superior to your standard canoness. Priest and Preachers can give extra attacks, the Dialogus can help with leadership, mortal wounds and acts of faith, the Hospitaller can restore injured models, and the Imagifier can help out against high AP weapons or can give them plus one strength. So these girls really have all sorts of options for buffing them character wise. I certainly wouldn't worry about trying to get too many of these off, and they are fairly happy working independently. I'd say all the various melee buffs are more worth it if you do overlap a lot of them rather than just take one or two. In general, my favourite buffing characters for these girls would be the Canonus and the Imagifier, everything else being a little bit more situational or expensive for me. As Adeptus Sororitas Infantry, they also get access to the Sacred Rites, which you can either roll for two or pick one. Most of the Sacred Rites are useful on Battle Sister squads. In particular, shooting when you die is useful. Extra AP on sixes is great. The Passion can buff their melee and the Hand of the Emperor can help them advance, could be particularly good on an Ardent Shroud sister line there. A few of the Warlord traits and relics can help them out too. In particular, my favourite Warlord trait is Indomitable Belief, another one that adds plus one to the Shield of Faith ability. So with this plus Celestine, you could get them up to a four plus Invul save, which is actually pretty survivable for nine point models, and with their power armour will mean that there aren't many weapons that are going to efficiently kill them. There are plenty of stratagems that can buff battle sisters. If you do combine multiple special weapons, then Holy Trinity can allow you to have plus one to the wound roll when you have both a bolter, flamer, and melter gun all in the same unit and all firing at the same target. It does have the slight downside that you're not always going to want all these different weapons firing at the same target, because in particular the melter gun's better at tanks and the rest are better at infantry, but plus one to wound is very powerful, and it could be worth it to access this effect. Holy Rage is a useful little movement option, meaning that you can charge even if you advanced. Could be good for tying up an enemy infantry unit or tank, and maybe getting your battle sisters to an objective. Suffer Not the Witch is always a great option when you're facing Psychers. It'll give you a flat reroll on the wound roll, which can put your battle sisters' damage output through the roof. Blessed Bolts is a 1 command point stratagem to make your Storm Bolters AP-2 and damage 2. It's a shame that you can only get 2 Storm Bolters in the standard battle sister squad but might be potentially useful if you really just need an incredibly good volley out of them and only that squad can do the job. And finally, Judgment of the Faithful is a good one to keep in mind that it's an option where you use it if your sororitas fall back and then they can still shoot and charge this turn. Could be good at surprisingly getting them out of a jam and then still allow them to deal damage and potentially charge again in the assault phase. 
Overall, though, I probably wouldn't go too mad on using loads of stratagems for your standard battle sisters. Generally, you're going to get better value out of the bigger damage dealing units, and just keep these stratagems in the back of your mind for special occasions, and use the bulk of your stratagems on your heavy hitters. So how would I actually field a battle sister squad in a game of 40k then? For me there are kind of two routes that you can go down. As my standard default option, I'd usually run just multiple small units of battle sisters, and take two storm bolters for the two special weapons, that'll give you a 49 point sister squad that's cheap and cheerful, will fill out battalions really easily, and put out a decently efficient amount of bolter fire. These guys definitely compete decently versus the other troops running around in 40k. Having a 2-up save against small arms when they're in cover is a really good advantage of sister squads, and I can imagine a bunch of small units like this on objectives being incredibly annoying to deal with. For these girls, I'd have them operate fairly independently. I'd be wanting to send groups of them after specific objectives to try and get down and secure them with their objectives secured, to chip in their firepower against enemy light infantry, and provide cheap screening speed bumps against enemy heavy hitters coming in, keeping your really valuable units protected behind them. The other way that you could go would be to create some sort of battle sister cattle with overlapping buffs from a bunch of different characters, making them a lot more survivable and potentially a fair bit more damage dealing. In particular, if you had Celestine and the Warlord trait Indomitable Belief, you would be having 4 plus invul saves on all your nearby sisters, and you could also combine that with the Imagifier to ignore AP-1 AP, meaning that basically no weapon in the game is going to be particularly efficient at shooting them due to all of those overlapping defensive buffs. With this one, I'd be more tempted to field 10 sister units, because then with bigger units it's a lot more easy to chain more models back and get into auras, while also fanning out to create board presence. You could also potentially combine this with Valorous Heart to give them a 6-up feel no pain, and ignore AP-2 as well, making them just ridiculously survivable for Toughness 3 models, or perhaps Bloody Rose, and create a massive synergy of melee buffs, throwing in things like Preachers and Priests, the Magifiers for plus 1 strength, and maybe using the Sacred Rite that gives you extra attacks on 6s. I think that this second wave requires a fair bit more thought, but could create a good armoured core of Battle Sisters to try and dominate the mid field of the board, particularly when they're supported by some fighty characters, or maybe some other heavy hitting elements, as well as these two standard ways, I could see you having a few dedicated backfield sister squads for scoring home objectives, perhaps just buying in a storm bolter and a heavy bolter, sitting in cover on home objective and blazing away at the enemy all game long. In terms of comparisons, obviously the battle sisters have no counterpart in their troops slot in the codex, so you are going to need them to generate those command points from battalions to use all those fun stratagems, but in terms of damage dealing units, you would have to weigh them up strongly against other units. If you're looking at battle sisters as damage dealers, you're probably better off using Celestians, they only cost one point more, and instead of getting reroll once from the cannoness, they get full rerolls to hit. This is going to make them massively more efficient damage dealers than your standard battle line sisters. So if I was going for a core of battle sister squads with overlapping auras, I'd be very tempted to take them instead. Having an additional attack each is also not a bad bonus. If you're looking at battle sister squads to deliver special weapons or heavy weapons, I'd certainly think about whether you want to be using those special weapons in Dominions or the heavy weapons in Retributors, as both of those squads have their own unique advantages for fielding those weapons. Overall though, I do like the standard battle line sister squad. They're a solid flexible troops choice, and they won't feel like too much of a tax for filling up your battalions and earning you the command points. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, if you've had any particular success with fielding battle sisters in one particular loadout or way of using them, it'd be good to get some more first hand experience. Thanks for listening to another Auspex Tactics video, I will certainly be continuing with the analysis of the Adeptus Sororitas Codex in future videos, so feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more. I also do have a Patreon page, if you are enjoying my videos, feel free to leave any support you'd like there as I would like to make this a bit more of a full-time thing that I do, rather than just a hobby I do in weekends and evenings. Thanks again for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.